Hey ladies and gents, it's Zen back doing the classic game review. And I am showing you the... Uh, yes, this is my favorite game of all time. Um, developed by Sid Meier's. Now if you guys don't know who Sid Meier's are, you've been living up... <laughs> you've been living under a rock. Because uh, Sid Meier's is considered by many to be the greatest uh, video game creator of all time. Um, I believe he was ranked second at uh, IGN for that um, game spot, uh, like in 96, 97. Uh, yeah, he, he's just been showered with rewards. I mean, he, you got Sid Meier's Pirates, you got Sid Meier's Gettysburg, uh, Sid Meier's Civilization 1, 2, 3, 4, Sid Meier's, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. Uh, yeah, his name is on all these games, and all of them have been rated, yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're some of the best games ever created. Um, and, and this is a turn-based strategy game, if, if you guys don't know, if you're not familiar with this genre of games. Uh, but uh, Alpha Centauri came out in 1999. So this game is rather dated. We're coming up on 20 years uh, this game has been out. Uh, there was an expansion pack. There's a Sid Meier's. Uh, there's an Alpha Centauri 2, essentially. Uh, but the expansion pack came out a few years later uh, after its initial release. When this game was released, it was it was given by PC Gamer a rating of 98, which at the time was the highest ever given to a video game, and I do believe it's still one of the highest. I I, I think I just saw not too long ago that the um, uh, yeah Zelda the um, the one from the uh, Nintendo uh, Nintendo 64, uh, the Ocarina of Time hit a 99. And that, that game was epic. So now, this had this a 98. Uh, for years, this was the highest rated video game uh, that PC Gamer had ever uh, had ever looked at. Uh, that's how good it was. I mean, you know, Civilization 2, which was an epic game itself, was, was like a 97. But this, this, this was better. Uh, so what kind of story do we get with this? Like I said, 1999, this came out. Uh, I remember buying it. I think I bought it in 2000 or whatever. Um, after playing, you know, years of playing Civilization 1 and Civilization 2. Uh, this is the continuation of Civilization 2. So now if you if you remember playing Civilization 2, if you'd ever played Civilization 2, at the end of the game, uh, I believe in 2060 is what the end date was, you lost a spacecraft toward uh, Alpha Centauri uh, with, I believe, 10,000, roughly 10,000 colonists on there. Uh, the Earth had turned into a shithole, uh, and everybody was escaping. So that's the initial ending of uh, of Civ 2 uh, and Sid Meier's went the next step with Civ with, with Alpha Centauri in my opinion uh, the best turn based game strategy game ever made uh, the, the playability of this game even after 20 years I can still sit down and fucking lose myself for 8 hours <laughs> yeah it, it's that easy and there's not a lot of games that I would play from 20 years ago uh, right, even with outdated graphics on this thing, uh, it's not about the graphics; it's about the gameplay. And this has such an in-depth, uh, dynamic gameplay uh, over all other Civ games. Even the newer Civ games that I've played uh, still don't compare to this for uh, just the, uh, like I said, the dynamic gameplay that you can do with it. So we're going to actually look at some of the Wikipedia, uh, the um, storyline here. Uh, this was the, you know, I talk about year 2016 was a civilization on planet Earth has been ravaged by war, famine, and pollution, uh, and the UN launches the Starship Trinity Unity. Forty years later, they end up on, uh, in Alpha Centauri. Uh, the shit hits the fan, and the Unity crashes on the planet of Chiron. Uh, in, the, in the process of it falling to pieces, seven factions are created. Uh, and, and the factions are kind of loosely based on essentially uh, what was going on, obviously in Earth, and even today, 2017, you can see some of the uh, how the factions worked. Um, you know, you have a religious faction, you have a UN peacekeeper faction, you have a, uh, a essentially a North Korea um, Chairman Yang. Uh, you know. Uh, despot rulers, you have tree huggers, you have amoral scientists. Uh, yeah, so there's all these different little factions, the seven different factions that you can choose and play from, which is, which is in itself is quite fun. Um, uh, 
yeah, it, it is mind-numbingly funny to 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 watch these game factions or, and read about them and just go, yeah, I can see that. I can see that in today's world. You know what I mean? Um, the game in general. Uh, now that you've landed on the planet, you know, in the, in the other Civ games you you dealed with, you dealt with barbarians. On this one, however, there is native life that live there in a, in a form of fungus, semi-sentient f- sentient fungus. Um, they spawn what's is known as mine worms, and these mine worms attack your bases. They attack your units, and they generally are a pain in the ass. Uh, same way with the fungus, you can't build on the fungus unless you clean it or clear it. Uh, and that kind of thing. So there's this, you know, not only are you competing against the factions uh, that it came down on the spaceship with you, but you're also competing against the native life on the planet, uh, which can be quite difficult. Um, you know, and I'm going to show in some of the gameplay what I was ta- what I'm talking about. Uh, the game, for most part, uh, has to do with the, um, like I said, here's the factions. I'm talking about here. We have the Spartan Federation, which is a mil- militaristic Spartan faction. Uh, the Gia's stepdaughters. <sighs> Essentially a bunch of tree huggers. Here's the Amoral University of Planet, Amoral un- uh, Scientists. Uh, yeah, they're, they're quite the characters. Uh, the UN Peacekeeping Forces. The Human Hive. Here's North Korea. <laughs> wow. Craziness. And then, of course, you get uh, Jehovah Witnesses in spaceships. Um, yeah, these guys are nuts. Uh, you have a hard time dealing with them. Uh, they're, they're not really a uh, easy bunch to get along with. Morgan Inter- Industries, this is straight up, yeah, pure corporate greed. Uh, so you get these fairly interesting factions that you can play. With that said, uh, the gameplay, you know, and I'm going to do some, game, some, some videos on the game, actual gameplay, and I'll do it more in-depth with you. Uh, as we play it, uh, but this but this game in general is just it's so <laughs> dynamic. It's so fun. Uh, we're gonna look at some of the uh, the awards they won. Obviously, highest rated game ever, PC Gamer, GameSpot turn-based game of the year, 99. Um, yeah, uh, strategy game of the year nominee, uh, Imaginary Life best of the best. Game Industry News Best Game Soundtrack of 1999. Uh, you know, and this this was you know right after it came out, um, and it's just gotten better. I mean, the, the, this this thing is just uh, you know, if you talk to some people that have ever played turn-based strategy games, and they'll go like, yeah, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri. It doesn't get any better than this. Um, relatively cheap uh, on iGog uh, or on GOG. I'm sorry, uh, six bucks uh, for this game. Uh, and the great thing about uh, this game is, of course, you can pick, um, uh, you can get it for uh, Windows 10, Mac, uh, OS systems, all that kind of stuff. And, and if this is anything of value to you, I mean, there's 4,174 votes, all five stars. Uh, that's how good, <laughs> that's how good uh, this game is, and that's how much people love this game. So I'm going to bring up some gameplay for you guys to check out uh, Alpha Centauri, and I'm going to do a little quick run-through. Uh, and you guys can get a feeling for uh, for what this game is all about. All right, guys, we're gonna be looking at the game. Uh, <laughs> yes, 1999 graphics. Wow. <clears throat> and I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like I said the graphics are what they are. The, it, it's 1999. Uh, you know, cell phones used to be the size of car batteries. Uh, you know, the, this is nothing compared to. The, I mean, it's almost 20 years. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, but you're not playing this game because you know how pretty it looks. This game is all about the gameplay, and what you get in this game is some unparalleled, uh, some unparalleled play. Uh, the complete customization that you get in this game uh, is ridiculous. And we're gonna drop over here to say we're gonna look at the the, the HQ. And now there is an absolute shit ton of drop down menus that you can customize uh, as you play. You can customize your civilization. Uh, I'm actually going to go to the HQ here. So you have a social engineering. Um, this can, th- th- this essentially uh, is how you're going to run your civilization. You have uh, different um, choices you can make uh, from frontier simple survival to knowledge 
Democrat, Green, Knowledge, and this gives you a social effect that you do. Uh, you can change the economy, the psych, and the labs, of course. Uh, economy is, of course, how you make money. Psych is how to keep your, your uh, people happy. And, of course, lab is, is your uh, how fast you progress up the tre tech tree. And, you, and simply by changing this, you can see how it changes uh, the social effects. Uh, so you can, comp you can, like I said, completely customize your uh, civilization and how you want them to move. Uh, of course, I don't have this completely, completely upgraded future societies, the values, and the politics. Uh, this is only 150 50 turns into the game, roughly. Uh, so I don't have all of the pol political systems researched or the values or the future society values uh, or future societies uh, researched yet. And you know, like I said, with the society over here, you, you notice the uh, changes. There's the economy, the ethics, the support, the morale, the police, the growth, the planet. All of these things matter. Uh, and you can, of course, uh, with, with the changes you'd make to your bases, you can offset uh, a lot of these things. Uh, for example, for the research, uh, only plus two, but you can build uh, labs inside your cities and, of course, increases uh, your research. So there's that customization of your politics, your economics, and your values that you can do here, plus what you can do in your cities. Yeah, it, it's mind-blowing the amount of different things you can change uh, to make this work. Um, besides that, you have, uh, you can change your research goals. This is the data links. This thing is massive. You can literally spend all day long looking at all this stuff. Uh, it's just huge. Um, you know, telling you basically about what the game is. Uh, you have reactor types. They tell you advanced concepts. Uh, you know, there's different forms of victory that you can play. Uh, the tech advances, the tech trees are massive here. Uh, this, this will take you uh, a better part of most of the game to go through most of these, uh, these techs. Uh, and as you, of course, you work your way up the tech tree, uh, you get more uh, base facilities, you get more uh, weapons, you get better chassis, you get uh, uh, allows you to uh, work on the planet, uh, you know, the green part of it, if you just want to be a, you know, tree hugger uh, and just use mine worms and fungus to your advantage, you can do that, that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, you know, air power, flexibility, loyalty, all this stuff right here, these are your tech advance advances. You could spend hours just going through every one of these uh, to learn uh, all that uh, all that tech uh, and politics and economics and all that stuff uh, uh, completely customizable uh, and you will spend like I said literally hours uh, just running through stuff like this um, you know the maps uh, you can change the drop down menus on this thing is huge once you of course learn all the hotkeys it's not so hard um, the terraforming scenarios you can create your own edit maps you can create your own maps. Uh, yeah, uh, completely customizable. When the first start up with the screen, you get to choose whether you want to play on the actual map uh, of the planet, because there is an actual Alpha Centauri map. Or you can customize your map like I do, uh, make it huge, small, little, whatever. You can tell how much water you want, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, completely customizable. Um, I play mostly on continents, uh, but you can do just small islands where you're just going to play on islands, and you're going to spend... And you know, a great deal of time trying to get off the islands and uh, obviously looking for tech and all that kind of stuff. Very interesting. Uh, these little pods that pop up were kind of like the barbarian villages that are you see in Civ 1, Civ 2. Uh, you can find them on the land. They're on the land, they're in the water. Uh, these hold tech, they hold credits, they hold uh, units. Uh, you just have to, you know, move over to them. They also hold mine worms. And we were talking about that earlier with the native life. Uh, these red splotches you see here are fungus. Uh, you cannot build on this fungus uh, until later in the game uh, when you research the tech that allows you to build on the fungus. These, if you get a large amount of fungus, say for example, uh, this patch right here will start to spawn mine worms and they are the native life and they will attack every unit and they will start attacking your cities. Uh, the same way without here in the water, uh, here's for example is a large patch of uh, fungus and there will be mine worms that are constantly generated out of this thing. Uh, that will attack your cities, uh, and this the more they the more they spawn. It depends on how much uh, environmental damage you're doing to the planet, 
right? If you don't care about the planet, if you don't spend any time or effort trying to get along with the planet, uh, this just fucking keeps spawning shit going after your cities and your units. Uh, so you have to kind of get this fine balance. Uh, not only are you playing against the other factions, but you're also playing against the planet. And you piss off the planet enough, and uh, there'll be times where you're just like, holy shit, you know, there's just gobs uh, of native life forms attacking your cities and your and your units. Yeah, very interesting uh, dynamic of the game. Uh, you can later on in the game, uh, if you want to, and this is the dynamic part of this game, the, the ability to, to win... Uh, not just with the units you build, but you can you can be totally green, uh, and you can use the planet against uh, your enemies. You can build, you can you can manufacture your own mine worms. You can go over to your enemy cities over here and start planting fungus on the outside edges, and then the fungus will start to creep towards your enemy. Uh, you know, destroying his improvements around his cities, engulfing it in fungus all the way around, uh, and eventually sprouting mine worms. Uh, you can do that if you decide to play it uh, in that respect. If you decide to play the green uh, and, and you come one with the planet, you can use all of those, um, uh, the native plants, the, nat the native uh, the native creatures uh, as your armies, right? You can do that. I mean, that's part of the gameplay. <sighs> yeah, so it, 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 mind, I, I mean, there's just so much you can do. Uh, so many different ways you can win than just your usual, uh, you know, build a bunch of tanks and run over and kick the shit out of people, right? Uh, you can do it with the planet. You can do it uh, covertly. Um, you know, you, you have probe teams that are uh, essentially the spies of the old games. Uh, they can hack into cities, uh, drain their money, drain their tech, uh, capture the city. Those units also capture uh, enemy uh, units on the ground, you know, you can send them out. I mean, I've played games where I never even built anything but um, probe teams uh, and just simply sent them after my uh, my enemy just because I was bored one day. I was like, oh, fuck it, let's see if I can win this game that way. Uh, and, yeah, and I, the only units I built was a couple troops to, uh, you know, defend my cities. Uh, otherwise, all my offensive power was probe teams. Uh, you know, it, you have the ability to do that. Um, kind of a fun, different way of playing the game, right? Uh, University base. This is my very first base I built. The customization of here, you play with an uh, essentially a uh, three by three uh, kind of a square. It's actually a cross, uh, but each one of these individual squares uh, is what you control by the base. Um, the yellow here is, of course, energy. The blue is minerals, and the three is f and the green is food. Uh, these are uh, the three main. Uh, resources that you need to grow your base. The four is, the, 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 the energy is essentially your money. Uh, the two of the minerals, of course, is how fast you build units. And three, of course, is how fast, the green is, of course, how fast you build um, your population. Uh, you, you've, you can build facilities in your base. Uh, these facilities in your base help your uh, base uh, tree farms, research hospitals, command centers, naval yards, aerospace, all that stuff. You also have wonders that you can build uh, that affect the whole civilization. And like I said, uh, once you read through the data links and go like, wow, there's all kinds of shit you can do uh, with these wonders. Same way with the individual base facilities. Now, this is where it really becomes fun about this game, and, and more so than uh, any of the other turn-based games. Uh, is the ability to completely customize units. Uh, for example, the infantry, um, you know, you got your chassis selection here. Uh, then from the chassis, you can develop, for, use different um, weapons uh, that you can put on there. Uh, these have, uh, obviously I don't have them all researched. Like I said, this is a early game. Um, same way with shielding, uh, reactors, uh, and special abilities. Now these are special abilities once you add that to your unit, uh, for example, you can turn this unit into a artillery piece. Uh, you can turn this unit into a police force, uh, and this helps with controlling your um, your people in your bases. Uh, you can use it for attacking or defending against the native plants. Uh, you can make them drop, uh, make airdrops with them. Later on, you'll get orbital drops where you can drop any place on the planet. You can make them in amphibious units. 
uh, yeah, there's so all these different, and th this isn't even all of them. I haven't researched everything yet. Um, but yeah, the the complete customization of your units, uh, depending on what you want to do with them, uh, is my. I mean, there's just I haven't even completed all of the research yet. Uh, but even now, I can I can make these units do what I want um, just by changing, you know, the, the in in the workshop and then applying them to my uh, uh, my queue, uh, you know what I want to do. So yeah, it, the complete customization of the units is, is unique in Alpha Centauri. Uh, I believe it was the very first one to do it. And I'm not even sure there's a whole lot even that uh, turn-based games now since uh, that has it this in-depth. Um, the other interesting thing about this game is uh, these terraformers. Um, we were talking about earlier about winning the game, uh, you know, using the planet against uh, your enemies. Uh, these are along the same lines. These things actually can uh, completely change the planet. Um, for example, right now this thing is building a. Uh, it's got a kelp bed that it a kelp farm that it's planted, uh, and it's going to build. A, you know, you got a mining facility here, and these are tidal generators. Uh, you can build whatever you want out here in the water. However, you can take this unit out here and go out here into the ocean here, and you can start raising the land. Um, the further so. The further out the kelp gets, it, once it gets into deeper water, it won't grow. You can go over here to the middle of this black, this really deep part of the ocean, and you can raise this ocean level uh, until kelp starts to grow. Then you can build a sea colony and run a sea colony out there and drop your sea colony uh, so it can have, um, you know, uh, it builds a city out in the middle of the ocean. Uh, then the sea former can build all the things around it and that kind of stuff. You can take your sea former if you decide that, okay, uh, I wanted to... And this is what I was talking about earlier about the dynamics of the game. Um, this enemy over here, which is uh, Chairman Yang right here, uh, and I decide that, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm going to start attacking Ch uh, uh, Chairman Yang, uh, not just using my military units, but my formers. I can go over here, drop this land right here into the water, drop this land right here in the water, and I can isolate individual parts of the continent uh, that I can deal with in pieces instead of one big time. Same way with if I decided, well, you know what, um, I'm going to drop my former here, I'm going to bring some cruisers over here, protect it, and I can drop this city into the ocean. Nothing you can do about it. Uh, yeah, that that's that's the dynamic gameplay you get from using just terraformers, right? Not just the military units, but you can use the formers uh, against your enemy. Landformers. Uh, right now I have currently these this set of formers right here raising the land. It's going to create a bridge from here to here. Uh, this set down here is also raising the land. It's going to create a bridge from here to here. Uh, I'm building uh, what essentially is going to be a um, all the way around. You can look on the mini map here, and I'm starting to fill it in right now. Uh, I filled this in here with land. Uh, yeah. And I filled this in here with land. Uh, what I'm doing is building a protective ring around my inner cities. Uh, so if I do get attacked by Chairman Yang or any of these other asshats, uh, they're going to have to cross. Uh, outside barrier before they can get to the ins inside. Uh, right here is what I'm going to do. Uh, what I'm doing right here is building across here land uh, so they cannot get ships inside this inner harbor. Yeah, that's what you can do with your formers. Uh, same way if I was, so if I, if this city was mine and this city over here was Chairman Yang's, I can build a mountain between the two of us. And what that mountain does is stop the rainfall from going over the mountain and this side over here will turn into a desert. The side over here will turn into a lush paradise. Uh, same way with the great dunes here. I can start planting forests right here uh, and turning this in. I can drill to uh, a water source and creates a river. And that river creates, you know, obviously life. Uh, that's what you can do with these formers. The terraforming, uh, the terraforming gives you a whole list of things you can do with the terraformer. Constructs roads, terraform up, terraform down. Drill to aquifers, construct condensers, constructs air bases, all that stuff you can do with a terraformer. So there's completely, um, yeah, just a complete control of your environment that you never get in any other kind of turn-based game. So with that said, I'm I'm just gonna give you kind of give you guys give you an overview of what this game was about. Uh, I'm gonna bring up some gameplay for you a little bit later, uh, and you guys can uh, check out uh, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri.